Welcome to the Pinal County Board of Supervisors meeting for um, June 9th, 2021. We'll start out with uh, inv uh, invocation from uh, Pastor Bill Carney, and then Supervisor Kavanaugh will lead us in the pledge. If you all stand. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and all the blessings that you have already showered upon us and will continue to shower upon us. And we pray, dear Lord, that you help us to be ever thankful for all your good gifts to us. Heavenly Father, it is your will that we live together in peace and harmony. Defeat the plans of all those who would stir up violence and strife. Destroy the weapons of those who delight in war and bloodshed. And according to your will, end all conflicts in our communities and in our world. Support and keep all our first responders. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless and protect our police, our sheriffs, our firefighters, and all first responders as they serve us, and especially as they put themselves in very dangerous situations. And last but not least, Almighty God, we give thanks that through this wonderful Board of Supervisors, you have blessed them with the gifts they need to serve your people. Lord, cause them to recognize and to act on every opportunity for service, both to your community and for your common good. In you we do pray. Amen. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Let me just make sure that I have this thing turned off. Because, yeah. <laughs> All my bases. Okay, thank you, everyone. First item is call to the public. Consideration and discussion and comments from the public, those wishing to address the Pinal County Board of Supervisors, may appear in person or submit in writing uh, comments which shall be submitted to the clerk of the board by close business hours 5 p.m. the day prior to the meeting. Comments shall be no more than 250 words. Actions taken as a result of the public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter or reschedule the matter for further consideration and discussion at a later date. So I'll start with uh, Natasha. Do you have any? Chairman, the clerk of the board office has not received any comments from the public. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody in the public that would like to address the Board of Supervisors at this time? Okay, seeing none, that will take us to item number two, County Supervisors Association, CSA report. Mr. Sullivan, great to see you. I'm sure this will be riveting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I fear you set me up to fail right from the beginning there, but thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, for the record, I'm Craig Sullivan with the County Supervisors Association. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to brief you. Uh, to our new county supervisors, it's a pleasure to see you face to face for the first time. And so congratulations on entering these posts, and we look forward to working with you going forward. Um, the purpose of the briefing is to talk about some of the activities of the County Supervisors Association over the last year, some of the strategic initiatives we've been involved in, and of course the legislature. You note on the PowerPoint it's very dense. There's a lot of content in there. It's not my intent to go over everything. I just want to hit some uh, high points and then of course answer any questions uh, that I can from each of you as, as we go forward. Um, I do want to say at the outset that I'm gr very grateful for your support of the association and your involvement in the association. It makes a stronger collaboration of all 15 counties to have us all coming together and having a strong coalition voice. And I'm very grateful for all of the work that your professional staff does 
Mr. Liu, Ms. Ryle, and your contract consultant, Mr. Barnes, who always make sure that we have analysis and information on bills that are in the process that help us support Pinal County. And so I, I'm just so grateful for the team that you have here, and I want to acknowledge all of them because they're excellent, excellent professionals. Uh, so to, to begin a little bit, let me talk first just about who we are for the folks who might not be familiar with us. The County Supervisors Association is a collaboration of all 15 counties and the 61 supervisors. It's a nonpartisan organization that is focused on creating a forum to talk about issues that are relevant to county constituents and county operations, and of course, developing research and information to support decision making across counties and work with the state legislature and other external parties. Intergovernmental uh, engagement is really at the core of what we do, and the reason that becomes important is, and you know this better than anybody, is there are external factors outside of county government that impact your operations and resources. So the 15 counties need to be organized to communicate with them, um, both as a liaison and fielding information from them as well. And so that's really at the core of what we're trying to do. Our leadership are all 61 supervisors in the state, but we recognize that many of you have other things that you need to tend to, but you always have a voice at our table. We do have an executive committee that is elected by our membership, and Mr. Miller, thank you for your service as uh, representing the Large County Caucus on that. Um, we look forward to your uh, continued leadership in our executive committee and for the work that we get from this county on our legislative policy committee. Uh, we want to get your feedback weekly as we go through the legislative session. So it's a very participatory environment for county supervisors and professional staff. I mentioned that we convene forums regularly. This is just a quick list of speakers that we brought through over the past year. We're always looking for opportunities to connect you with decision makers uh, that can help inform your activities here locally. Uh, shifting gears a little bit, I want to talk about our research function. It's not something that we lead with a lot, but it's foundational to everything we do. And so what our professional staff focuses on is having the capacity to put products together that help inform decisions. We have a very large database of information we've been collecting over time, cost drivers, revenues, it's in, uh, input provided by local county professional staff. We do put some of that on our website in the form of our county encyclopedia, as well as our county revenue dashboard. And so at some point, uh, you, I'd encourage you to navigate those tools. I think you'll be pretty impressed with how they've been developing. Vanessa Fielder on our team has been uh, managing that project, and it incrementally grows year in and year out as we try to build out our local database. That kind of information becomes important as we look for strategic initiatives, and I want to reconnect you with the PSPRS conversation. Um, you all know that the association for several years, along with the League of Cities and Towns, was working to reform the pension systems. More recently, we've been focused in building capacity in the counties to better understand how the pension systems are impacting them and what the future trajectory of those costs might be. And so I participate in an advisory committee to PSPRS right now. Our professional staff make sure that we are providing input into the decisions they're making. The League of Cities and Towns serves with me in that capacity. And I think that's helping improve decision making by getting employer input to the Board of Trustees. Now, we also worked on uh, sharing information about what could be done uh, to, to get after this problem, it, because it is a significant debt. And this county was one of the first counties to take uh, the important step of pension bonding to lower the long-term costs uh, of the pension system. And it saves the taxpayers here a significant amount of money. About eight counties have followed your lead in that regard over the last uh, several months, some bonding, others adjusting their property tax rates, and others prioritizing reserves that they already have to put in to pay off that debt. So we've come a long way, and I know Mr. Goodman, Mr. Miller, you know the frustration that local governments have had on this, and so we've all been trying to incrementally help the state and the system solve this problem. So kudos to all of you for your leadership. Another strategic priority we've all been involved in is the, uh, the, the pandemic response, obviously. We served a role in just convening supervisors and managers to talk about share best practices and all that in, in the response. 
The federal conversation about resources was a big deal. You all played a big role in that to help secure resources for the counties. Where we stand now is the next phase, figuring out how the new round of monies, the ARPA monies, can be invested in your community. And so we are just helping funnel in comments to Treasury to get greater clarification on the guidance and roundtabling with the managers about how people brainstorming ideas about what people are trying to do with this. So we as a collaboration of counties will be engaged in that project for the next couple of years. Shifting off strategic initiatives, I do want to talk about the legislature. It's, uh, as you know, uh, typically done by now, but it's still an ongoing process. So why isn't it finished? Well, it's not uncommon that in years where there's a lot of money that there's a lot of tension about how to land the budget. This year is probably more significant because there's a large-scale tax package that's on the table that you're aware of in reducing income taxes, changing property tax assessment ratios, and some members have raised concerns about that package. The cities have been very concerned about revenue sharing. So you're very well aware of that. That's what's holding it up in the main. But there are other pet projects that members try to get into the budget related to elections or other things, and that's all kind of in play. You saw this week that the legislature tried in the House to move. It didn't move a budget. They'll try again on Thursday. So we'll see this play out next Thursday. But the hotter the get it gets, the worse it gets as it relates to the, the state budget. What I'd like to do is break down a little bit about some of the county touch points. And I do have to caution you that this is all changing. Uh, we are in a real-time negotiation, and so some of this will change. Uh, and so we have to be careful about dialing in on any specific provisions. Um, what you see on the right is where the state's spending uh, a lion's share of money. And I wanted to highlight that because they, like local governments, are focused on debt reduction, pay increases. And when the state gives pay increases, it impacts uh, the whole market for detention officers, sheriff's officers, things like that. And, of course, education. What you see on the left is the tax package, the income tax cut, significantly impacts the cities, as you know, and possibly impacts state financial stability going forward. Um, we have been providing input on the property tax change. What that change would do is change the underlying mix of your property tax base, slowly um, shifting more of the overall burden to the homeowner side. This has been a policy that's been incrementally changing over the last several years. Uh, by lowering business commercial assessment ratios. That is in this package going from 18% to 17%. It's fairly small, but it does impact your underlying uh, uh, revenue generating capability, and it does shift future tax burden more to the homeowners. The way the state dealt with the concerns about the homeowners was by increasing what's called the homeowner's rebate. So I won't get into the technical elements, but it's basically a subsidy to homeowners to buy down their school tax rate. And so they did that. That's an imperfect solution because it doesn't touch the secondary taxes. It only touches the primary, and it doesn't hit all classes of property. Um, so this package is in play, and in some form, this will come out in the final budget. A few other county touch points that I wanted to, to highlight for you. The Department of Juvenile Corrections local government fee is not relevant here. You all helped get rid of it for the rural counties. It does impact Maricopa and Pima. Currently in the budget, there's relief from the counties paying the State Department of Revenue. Uh, that was a fee that was put in place during the revenue shortfall of 2015. You shouldn't be paying that bill, but it's been in place, and some members have stepped up and proposed to eliminate that. It's currently in the package and would save you about $236,000. The big conversation is around infrastructure. Uh, and so there's a lot of money, uh, one-time money, that's been allocated to transportation and broadband. I wanted to take a quick moment on Altex, Arizona Long-Term Care System. What's that? That is the state's program to support elderly and physically disabled folks who need long-term care. We don't do anything as it relates to the program. What we do do is we help pay the bill. Uh, and so when the state makes changes to that, we feel it. This year, your bill is going to be about $12 million. Now, I think that's lower than the prior year, and that's a good thing. But I want to ca uh, caution you and your manager and your finance director that I think this is artificially suppressed and we'll likely see this increase in the future 
because folks aren't going into the long-term care system right now, so caseloads are down, but also the federal government has increased its support, and so our, our, our uh, impact is, is lower than typical. Two other slides on the budget I just wanted to highlight. There are resources to compensate the ca uh, local jurisdictions for the Transwestern Pipeline Settlement. This is something we worked in uh, partnership with our colleague organization, Arizona Association of Counties, and their client base, and that was a good result that ended up in the budget. Similarly, county reentry planning services, uh, where your county will receive $4 million of that allocation um, going forward. Uh, a lot here, uh, a couple of things I wanted to highlight. Mr. Miller, you have been leading the charge on a lot of water-related matters, and I, I'm, I've been grateful for your leadership in that capacity. You had success this year on a bill that was in the process. Kudos to you on that. You know, that was a lot of hard work. Um, the legislature is finally hearing uh, a lot of the county leaders that we need more resources for water supply development. And so there is about $200 million that they're putting on the table to fund revolving funds for water development, drought mitigation, and that kind of thing. We need to figure out a lot of the details here, and so we'll be working on that as we go forward. And border resources uh, are obviously a big issue right now. There are monies in the, in the budget that will go to the sheriffs related to border security, and you guys will likely be included in that. What I'd like to highlight, though, is that this is changing because there are elements to this package that are changing. So we'll just have to see, have to see how it shakes out. This is a list of the road projects, again, highly in flux, and there was some amendment language that might change some of this, and you can see some of the, the, the projects that were listed in the original budget related to Pinal, as well as road pre preservation dollars. But again, caution, caution, caution. This is, this is changing. Uh, quickly on broadband, they put a lot of resources to support uh, county planning grants as it relates to broadband development. That's something we all ask for. I know you've got Ms. Ryle working on broadband-related activities. So just know the state did accelerate its commitment to broadband deployment. I want to talk a little bit about bills. We do take some bills into the process. Of the bills we introduced, two were signed into law, and those two came out of Pinal County. And so the military leave pay, uh, issue at the lower left there and the writing candidates where ideas you brought forward were adopted by your colleagues across the state and then our team working with Mr. Barnes uh, shepherded those through the stakeholder process and the legislature and I really want to thank Mark and his teammate Rebecca Beebe uh, they were constantly in this and, and worked very hard to get those to the finish line largely what we do is what we call reactive advocacy and so I have a few slides on that Counties are unique. We have so many touch points with state law that every year the legislature is in session, they can change your operations at the stroke of a pen. So there are hundreds of bills that touch you. Um, we engage them and try to amend them favorably. This year, as you know, there was a big conversation about elections. Over 130 election-related bills were in the process. That's massive. Never seen anything like that. Um, and that's all kind of sorting itself out. You're probably familiar with uh, the, uh, uh, the, the change to the permanent early voting list that was passed into law. And, of course, there's an ongoing conversation about additional identification on mail-in ballots. Um, what we look at in election bills is process. So we're really focused on, well, how does all this work and how does it exist with existing statutes and our processes? And since supervisors have some functions and recorders uh, have some functions. We work very closely with the Arizona Association of Counties, who represents the recorders, and I want to extend my appreciation to their good work. The recorders were awesome at providing input into these election bills, and Jen Marson uh, did, a, did a very, very professional job in leading that dialogue with state lawmakers. Uh, the pandemic, as you might imagine, was a conversation at the legislature. Here are some bills that were chaptered. And, and for the new folks, chaptered means signed into law. Um, and so that's, that's what that means at this point. And then those that are pending are still in the legislature. Um, but they pass laws related to mask mandates, uh, license revocation, and things like that. We were part of the coalition to get additional civil liability protections for local governments and businesses as it relates to uh, claims um, related to COVID. 
This last slide is just to show you that we do operate in many, many policy areas, and this is just a select area, tax policy, environment, transportation, infrastructure. We do a lot of work in pensions and workers' comp, and there were some bills uh, related to firefighter cancer, which doesn't touch the county, but often we see similar types of policies for PTSD, which does, do, do touch uh, county operations, so we may see some of that next year. And there were, was a measure put in place to allow for local pension board consolidation. When we get done with the legislative session, we provide all the counties with a summary of every bill that touches their operations that passed, and that's something your team can use to uh, when they get focused on implementation. The last thing I wanted to touch on is just going forward. Um, when the session's over, we will do a session wrap-up to just talk about what happened, and I mentioned the legislative summary documents. We have to transition into implementation mode, and so that's how we'll spend the summer. We are asking that counties that would like the, the uh, CSA to adopt proposals for next year provide those ideas to us on August 8th. And I know that's a little early, but it just tells us to get rolling. And as you know, we're a little flexible with that date anyway. And going forward, we don't have Board of Supervisors meetings in the summer months, but we do meet with the managers. Uh, we'll be meeting in June, well, this Friday, uh, with all the county managers. And then we do have um, our board meetings kicking off again September 16th. But I'd like all of you to make a note on your calendars for what we call our legislative summit. That's when we get all the counties together to adopt our legislative platform for next session. And that this year, that's being done in Prescott, being hosted by Yavapai County. So we're looking forward to getting back face-to-face -face for all of that. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I know I went way over time, uh, but thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sullivan. Anybody have any questions? No. Just thank you. Well, it looks thank good. I, yeah, it's... It's all in limbo anyway. I mean, a lot of it is. And uh, so after the dust settles, we'll see where we're at. But thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Greg. Well, thank well, you all. Done. Have a great Well time. done. Thanks, Greg. Okay, brings us to item number three, the county manager's report, information only. Mr. Liu. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and thank you to everybody, all the team members that are working on the fires. I'm going to delegate my time over to uh, Chuck Komet, our emergency operations manager, to give us an update on the fires. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, Chairman, Vice Chairman, members of the board. Chuck Komet, emergency manager for Pinell County. Um, so a couple updates. First, first one um, is from the uh, Margo fire. Uh, just briefly, wanted to let you know that uh, from that fire in Dudleyville that started uh, April 8th, um, we have uh, crews out there uh, that started, what's today, Wednesday, started Monday um, to do the debris removal of the 30 structures that were lost or damaged there. Uh, we have a total of 38 people out there, uh, some county staff, mostly volunteers, and they're working on, uh, so like I said, 24 sites, 30 structures, and they've cleaned two properties as of this morning. Um, we also had the state out there yesterday to uh, take a look at things as part of the disaster declaration that we did with that to see about um, rolling in debris removal as part of that uh, disaster reimbursement uh, potential. <clears throat> as far as the telegraph fire goes, I do have a, a deputy IC, Jeff Andrews, here with me today. Um, if you would like any technical questions answered or anything like that, I just want to give you a brief overview uh, from our perspective, you know, kind of the global uh, thing for this. It started on Friday southeast of uh, Superior in uh, Tonto National Forest. Um, by Saturday morning, um, we were getting phone calls from the sheriff's office saying that uh, in coordination with the, the fire teams that were there at the time, that we were going to need to put Superior into a set. Uh, and what that is is part of the Ready, Set, Go program uh, initiative a couple years ago that was established between emergency management and the uh, sheriff's associations to let people know kind of a, uh, an easy way of be ready um, to uh, the potential for evacuate set would be, you know, there's a good chance you're going to have to evacuate and go is meaning you need to go. Um, so that was uh, Saturday morning when we put uh, Superior in set. Uh, it was a little bit later that we put uh, the uh, top of the world into set as well. 
uh, late Saturday night is when uh, Highway 60 was closed uh, in order to affect an evacuation if need be for top of the world, but then also uh, because of the fire dangers that were getting closer and closer to, uh, to Highway 60 and the amount of fire traffic, you know, firefighter traffic that was going to be going back and forth to, uh, uh, to handle that fire at that section. Um, it was on Sunday when we put uh, Top of the World into go, uh, and we had most of, the, uh, most of the residents that left there. There were a few that decided to stay behind, um, uh, understanding you know, what that meant for them. Um, and then uh, it was the next day was when APS had to shut their power off to that area. So 211 customers in Top of the World were without power or are without power. Um, because of the uh, the damage to poles, uh, as well as the the firefighter you know, risk and safety that, that goes along with that, with down power lines. Um, so fast forward a couple more days, we are still all in that same you know set for Superior. Uh, Highway 60 is still closed, 177 is still closed, um, and we uh, we still have top of the world in, in go status. Uh, we're hoping that things will change uh, over the next couple days. They've made a lot of great progress uh, to that area of the fire. And as you know, it's progressed east and pushed into Gila County. Um, I will say this because uh, the news talked about it this morning and uh, my phone blew up. Uh, so hopefully this will alleviate some of that. Um, the five structures that were reported uh, in the news to this morning to have been lost are all in Gila County. They are not in Pinnell County. Um, so the... Uh, uh, where we stand now is 21% contained, about 81,000 acres that have been burned, um, and we've got, uh, or they've got roughly 800 personnel on that fire, uh, fighting that, you know, from Superior all the way to uh, to Globe and and beyond. So um, that's it for the, uh, the the kind of the highlights. Um, if you have any questions of me, or if you'd like to hear some more from uh, uh, from Mr. Andrews, be happy to do that. But I don't want to take up too much of your time. You got a question, or you got you want to? I want some to make some statements and some advice. Okay. So, uh, of course, we are all out there to the public, and we we get uh, all this week. We've been contacted. What can we do? And there is some things that the county can do, but a lot of what can be done is you can do it yourself. Uh, we all have uh, unincorporated residents in our districts. And you look at their addresses, their foothills this or canyon that. You, we got folks that live up against the mountains on the edges of cities. And as of right all this week, the, uh, the fire department has been out in my area doing fuel reduction. And if you look at a Palo Verde tree or an ironwood tree, they grow over like this. And then under that tree, you've got brittle bush and jojobas and uh, sagebrush that grows under there. And when the fire hits that tree, it just goes up, and then it jumps and jumps and jumps. So what they're doing is they're taking away all of that easy fuel so that if a fire does get away, then it, it's so much more easy to contain. And everybody that lives in a remote area like this on the edge needs to be doing this to their own property. And uh, if you go to my Facebook page, I've got a series of videos that I did uh, showing it and showing the crews out there working and uh, ignore some of the political stuff on there. I'm sorry, we're all political. But uh, if you go to that, uh, those posts, you'll see uh, some examples of how it should look when they're finished and before and after. And it really helps the fire department to contain, contain fires where they are. So I so wanted to get that out there. Also, the county and code enforcement does not drive around looking for people to cite. We... I believe we have to respond to complaints, right? So if you know of a property that looks like a terrible fire hazard, then do give the county a call and we can go drop a letter to them and say, hey, you need to cut your brush. But uh, I don't think we go around just citing people for a terrible brush. So everybody uh, said if you see something, say something. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Mr. Kavanaugh. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Kavanaugh. Kermit, thank you for coming today. And I've received high praise uh, directed at your staff from the Rubicon team. So they, they said, uh, the Rubicon team said Pinnell County uh, is the most organized, uh, well-prepared um, outfit that they've worked with in recent memory. So kudos to you. 
And uh, my thanks to the, we have about 750 firemen, firefighters on the, on the Telegraph fire, is that correct? Yes, sir. And do you know how many on the Mescal fire? About 650. Okay, so 13, 1,400 firefighters. 1400. And that's, obviously we're, we're very dry and we're gonna be talking about approving fireworks displays uh, coming up soon. And so I'd like to, you know, I'd like uh, either of you to speak on that for a moment. Is there a, is there a risk we should? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. If uh, it's not appropriate at this point in time for the county manager's delegate to respond to questions. However, you do have a consent item, uh, AW, right. where you are right. approving an emergency declaration for the uh, telegraph fire, and it would probably be appropriate under that item when we get there. When we get there. Yes, very well. I agree. And, and, and excuse so, me, and also for the firework display. Correct. Get to that's those what I'm saying. And we have, so, let's do it in sequence as as presented on the agenda. Sure thing. We'll call you back. Yeah. So thank you. Any other questions or comment under the county manager's report, Mr. Liu? You good? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Brings us. Uh, to the uh, purchasing division report. Ms. McBride. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman, and members of the board. Shauna McBride, your purchasing manager for Pinal County. And today I have your June 9th, 2021 purchasing division report. So first up today, the board is requested to approve the following new contract awards. We recommend contracts be awarded to the following suppliers for specialty legal services. Copper Smith Brockelman, Dickinson Wright, Helm, Lifesay, and Worthington, Hinshaw and Culbertson, Jackson Lewis, Jones, Skelton, and Hichuli, Leonard and Felker, Moise Sellers and Hendricks, Pierce Coleman, Sims Mackin, Struck Love, Bojanski, and Aceto. Uh, the initial two year term of the contract begins on July 1st, 2021, and it has three automatic optional one year extensions. And this contract is used by the county attorney's office. We also recommend Pinal County Community College District be awarded a contract to provide Title IB WIOA Youth Program Provider Services beginning July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, with four optional one-year extensions. This contract will be uh, under the oversight of the Pinal County Workforce Development Board. And last, we recommend DCS Contracting Inc. be awarded the contract as the lowest responsive and responsible bidder for Meridian Road, Germain Road, to, high, to State Route 24, roadway and drainage improvements at a cost of $8,938,000 plus a contingency of $850,000. This contract will be used by the Public Works Department. Next, the board is requested, is requested to approve the following contract amendments. We recommend approval of Amendment 2 to exercise the optional extension period with file on queue for our property and evidence management system. This contract is used by the Pinal County Sheriff's Department. We also recommend approval of Amendment 2 to exercise the optional extension period with Tischler Bice for our infrastructure improvement plan and development impact fee study. This contract is used by the Planning and Development Department. And next, we recommend approval of Amendment 3 to exercise the optional extension period for civil construction services with the following suppliers. DBA Construction, Inc., Sunland Asphalt and Construction, SWP Contracting and Paving, and Viasun Corporation. This contract is used by the Public Works Department. Last in our amendments, we recommend approval of Amendment 3 to exercise the optional extension period with the following suppliers for asphalt maintenance and repair services. Cactus Asphalt, Southwest Slurry Seal, and Viasun Corporation. And this contract is also used by the Public Works Department. Next, we are requesting the board approve the following change orders. Purchase order number 242362. The change amount is $59,841 for a total amount of $13,511,624 for dance and construction for construction services requested by the facilities department. We also have some cooperative purchases over $250,000 the board is requested to approve. Requisition 161478 in the amount of $340,423 to CDW government. 
uh, this is for the Google Apps Google Suite subscription and is requested by IT. And last, we would like to make the board aware of the following cooperative purchases that were made that had a value between $100,000 and $250,000. Purchase order 245067 in the amount of $249,504.53 uh, to high tech network and security solutions uh, for Cisco Security and re requested by the IT department. And then purchase order 245122 in the amount of one hundred fifty-four thousand nine hundred forty-seven cents, sorry, nine hundred forty-seven and fifty cents, to ESRI for license renewal requested by the IT department. And that's your purchasing report for June 9th, twenty twenty-one. Uh, Ms. McBride, back on items um, three and four, I believe. Can roll back to there. Those are like on-call uh, types of contracts. Yes, those we are. We just types. have them in place because the department may need something from them that they're specialized in. That is I just correct. like to make that clear. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments at this time? <laughs> Board's pleasure. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the purchasing report dated today as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. I just have it. Thank, Thank you, Shauna. Have a great day. You too. Okay, brings us to item number five, the con uh, consent items. All items indicated by an asterisk will be held by a single vote as part of the consent agenda unless the board member, county manager, or a member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. So, um, Mr. Cavanaugh, you indicated you wanted some... Something pulled? Mr. Chairman. C and D, sir. C and D. Okay. Anybody else from the board? I don't want to pull any. I just wanted to make some comments. I was going to comment on some of the C through G, but I'll wait for Kevin on that. Also on AH about the uh, illuminated stop signs that uh, we're going to be doing with the tribe. We have some of those in my in my area. Okay. And I just want everybody to look at them. They're really, for a remote area, they're really great. And I think it's a trend in the future. So everybody oh. pay attention when you see those. I'm going to pull it, and then you can make a better, closer comment about it at this time. So we'll pull AH as well. And then AW. And then AW. <laughs> so we've got C and D. Oh, yeah. So we have C and D, uh, AU, or I mean uh, AH and AW. AH and AW. Okay. I have a motion? Actually, do you have the public? Did you ask them? Oh, I'm sorry. I need to ask the county manager. Do you want anything, Bolton? Does the public want anything pulled? Mr. Rivellis, come and identify yourself and tell us what it, which one. I'm sorry. Roberto Rivellis, resident of the Gold Canyon. Mr. Chairman, I just have one question on uh, consent item AF. AF. Okay, we'll pull it as well. Let me make sure I get them. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Anybody oh. else? If not, you good? I think so. You good with that? They're strategizing on something else. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go for a, okay. a motion? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve items A through AW minus item C, D, um, AH. A H A F F A G A G and A W. Is that correct? Did we get that right? Just for clarity, can you tell me who pulled A G? Let me look at it. That's the one that uh, Mr. Surdy was talking about. A, a no. H. Oh, A H. 
So not AG, AG not AG. Okay. Oh, then let's minus AG. Can I do that? Yep, yeah, we can just, <laughs> just redo, let's just, the, whole redo the whole Let's thing. just start right, at the beginning. Right. <laughs> yeah, you would do okay. that to me, wouldn't yeah. you? <laughs> Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve items A through AW minus C, D. Don't interrupt. A, F, A, H. And A, W. And A, W. Good to go. Good. Can I get a second on that before anything changes? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll <laughs> Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. Okay. C and D. Uh, who wants to... Who has this down? Natasha, but who wants to speak to it staff-wise? Do you have somebody specific, Kevin, that you want to well, ask any the, questions to? The uh, emergency operations director and the and the uh, fire um, director. Okay. Sure. You may have Comment. some expertise. Comment. Okay. Good morning again, Chairman, Vice Chairman, members of the board. Chuck Comment, does. emergency manager for Pinot County. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Kavanaugh has some questions about C and D, I believe. Yes, thank you. Mr. Komet, uh, we have two applications for fireworks displays. The fireworks productions, let me change glasses, are going to be handled by a professional uh, fireworks company. And it's my understanding that there, there typically is uh, fire staff on hand um, to fight a fire if one starts. And I did a little research, and I found in the past that we've had fires start up in San Manuel over the years and maybe perhaps other places. Mm -hmm. So my concern with these is the risk of fire. Um, we have a 1,500 fire personnel roughly from the, the region already firing, fighting wildfires that are out of control. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you address, with your expertise and your knowledge, whether you think it's a wise idea to approve item C and D. Yes, sir. Certainly will. Um, I'll at least do my best. So for, uh, for C and for D, and just some quick background on the, the actual permitting process, um, the uh, cities and towns obviously will have their own permitting process as such, but anything within the county um, would go through uh, the clerk of the board's office, um, and it is a, uh, a process in which they fill out an application. Um, the fire district, if there is one, uh, is uh, said to be notified, uh, but there is not an approval or disapproval on, on that piece, and then the final uh, approval comes from the sheriff's office. Um, and we will see it as well in, in our office, uh, provide any, um, any thoughts uh, that we may have for, for things, but we don't have like an, uh, a, a true approval in that, in that process, but there you know, can be discussion, obviously. Um, and in knowing the um, fireworks productions of Arizona, um, the top-notch group that have been doing it for a long time throughout the state, uh, and they always have good shooters uh, and are always putting on... Um, safe uh, productions and uh, in this case with it being in um, excuse me with it being in uh, the Saddlebrook area obviously they would talk to to um, Golden Ranch fire um, which d does typically have personnel staged there the other one for Toltec Elementary that would be within uh, Eloy fire districts um, purview and I've not spoken with them um, but I know in the past they have been there as well um, and I can say that the for state land uh, everything in Pinell County is a stage two restrictions uh, which means in state lands no fireworks um, no operating of, of particular machinery, no you know, shooting, you know, target shooting or anything like that because of how dry everything is. That obviously is not the case. Uh, neither of these properties are on state land, so that piece doesn't uh, necessarily apply. Um, the discussion with fire districts and fire departments um, as of late because of everything going on and how dry it is, yeah, their preference is that we're not 
you know, just straight up trying to start fires. Um, you know, it, it, it happens, I mean, it happens all the time. You know, I know you know, A Mountain, for example, down in Tucson, um, will catch fire almost every single July 4th celebration because of, of the fireworks that go on. Uh, and Tucson Fire is, you know, is ready for that. Um, goodness, if you were asking straight up for my professional opinion, and I think that's what you're asking me. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I wasn't ready for that one. Uh, in knowing both places, the surrounding area, the immediate surrounding area is fine uh, for, um, for the fireworks displays. You know, they have 100 or, or 200 feet uh, wide area. Uh, beyond that is the bigger concern. And beyond where where those things come down is is the bigger concern, and I can say that uh, Eloy Fire does not. I mean, they have they're, they're incredible people, but they don't have a tremendous amount of resources. And resources that would be backing them up are coming from 20, 30 minutes away, which there'll be a lot of fire activity that would grow from that. Um, the Saddlebrook one is going to be pretty similar. In that uh, you know there are you know the crews there and Golden Ranch is an amazing group, but they would also have backup coming from you know 20 minutes away, um, which would lend for the potential for fire growth. So um, my preference is not to have more fires right. in in the county. Um, and 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 forgive me, but the the backup you're talking about the, those that's those staff members might already be up on the Telegraph and Mescal fires. Is that correct? Uh, so they'll still have staffing for normal day-to-day -day operations, but to that end, uh, they may be on a different call. So, you know, if you've got a, a fire station that's, uh, you know, five miles away, uh, ten miles away or something like that, but they're on a medical call someplace else, well, then you're getting crews from the other fire station that may be another 12 miles away or something like that. Okay. Thank you. Non-answer answer? answer? No, well, I think I got your answer. In, generally, you think it's not a good idea. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for your courage. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Are you good with that? I'm good with that. Uh, answer for both of those? Uh, C and D? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Board's pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I would move that we deny the fireworks applications for items C and D. I have a motion to deny. Do I have a second? That dies lack of a second. Board's pleasure. I move we approve C and D. I have a motion to approve C and D. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve C and D. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. Nay. A 4-1 vote. Thank you, everyone. Moves us to, I believe it's A-H, or A-F, I'm sorry. So who pulled A-F? This is Mr. Ravellis. Oh, request. Mr. Ravellis. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, one question. I've seen conflicting data on the percentage of Pinal County residents who have been vaccinated. And since this deals with vaccination, I'm uh, asking what is the most accurate report on vaccinations for Pinal County residents of all ages? Okay. Do Mr. Lou, do we have somebody that can answer that yeah, question for Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Corey Redden, our public health emergency preparedness manager is here, and I think she can help guide us in the right direction to find that information. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman, members of the board. Corey Redden, Bio Defense Preparedness and Response Division Manager for Pinal County Public Health Services District. The question, um, as far as accuracy of vaccination results, we do update our 
website on the vaccine page daily. And that is a reflection of data that we are receiving from um, the, the state health department. And we have over 49 providers in our county and in addition to our clinics that are offering the vaccine. There is a little bit of a delay in um, sort of somewhat data dumping all of the um, immunizations that occur the day before into the state immunization uh, system. And then that will reflect the next day all of those doses that have been administered. There are providers, it's an executive order, that that must be done within a 24-hour period, but there are times that there may be a delay in the entrance of the administrated doses in that state system. Okay. So there, there could be a little bit where you may see the state report and then the time that we're entering, there may be a, um, a slight difference on our website, but typically happens with it resets within 24 hours where the data should match. Mr. Ravellis, does that answer your question or do you have more specific locations of where you're finding this data? If you, if you don't mind. What is the number or rate of vaccinations that have been provided? To, the, to Pinal County. It, to residents of Pinal County. To residents of Pinal County. Do you, in arm vaccinations. Okay. Do you have a do you have a number on that, uh, Corey? Um, we are. I, I don't. I'd have to look that up on our on our website. We do have dashboards on our website now that have that information. But we were over two hundred fifty thousand in our county that are vaccinated. Okay. Vaccines, yeah. vaccines administered, not fully vaccinated. That is just the amount of doses delivered um, into doses, arms. Doses delivered. So some, some of those doses may still require a second dose. Mm -hmm. that, that number on the very top, that over 250, It's just how many 000. people have received a shot. Yes. Whether it's one or two, it doesn't, right. we don't have that really broken down. Right, and that, that would be in our county, but there are times that residents in Pinal County will be vaccinated in another county, and that information does take, you know, 24 hours to meet into our system. Right, and I, and, I, and I want to just interject in the fact that I believe Tasha was trying to tell me at one time because it's almost, the reset is done because sometimes there's overlap or sometimes, like all of a sudden, oh yeah, we had a bunch of residents that got vaccinated in another county. It takes a little bit of time for that to get over here. Same yes. thing. We have somebody from Maricopa County gets vaccinated here. We got to send that data to Maricopa. You're absolutely so it's kind right. of all fluid. All, uh, might be a good word for it. It totally is. Okay, Did, uh, Mr. Ravellis, is that is? Are you satisfied with that answer? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Okay. So, do I have a motion on item A F? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve item A F on the consent items. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Thank you. A H. I see Jason in the back, if you don't mind. And I'm glad you did pull it off because I do have some comments about it. But if you want to go ahead and start, Supervisor Surdy. Well, let's members of the board, uh, Chairman, Vice Chairman. Yes. My name is Jason Botchin. I'm the Transportation Planning Supervisor for Pinal County Public Works. Okay. So I don't um, know if you wanted history on this or? Yeah, because that might answer my question. I have, a, I have an idea where I think where maybe some of this started, and I want to, uh, if you give me a little Absolutely. history on it. Uh, I believe back in November of 2019, um, the Pinal County Strategic Transportation Safety Plan was brought before you. Okay. As you know, we're uh, involved with CAG, MAG, Sun Corridor. They all had uh, safety plans, I think, in 2015, 2016, 2017. So we kind of took... Pinal County as a whole out of those three plans. We've got one centralized plan for Pinal County. Uh, we got 13 projects out of that. This is one of those. This is an LED stop sign project. It was originally a Pinal County project that had Casa Grande, Coolidge, Eloy, and the Gila River Indian community. Uh, we, the project was initiated last year. We got IGA signed for Pinal County, for Casa Grande, for Coolidge, 
And for Eloy, ADOT has been working on an IGA with Gila River community since last June. I would say in March we were contacted and asked to remove the Gila River Indian community from the project so they would not get their three signs. Thinking about it, it didn't make sense. It's a HSIP, 100% covered, no local match. And the issue was um, there's a, uh, in the IGA, they want the tribe to waive their sovereign immunity or their sovereignty, um, and that's between ADOT and the, uh, the GRIC. Clearly, the GRIC did not want to sign that. And so what we thought about was, well, it's 100% covered. Why don't they give us the signs? So what this is doing is amending the original IGA where we'll get our three signs, we'll get the GRIC's three signs, and essentially we'll turn the three signs that go to the GRIC over to them. We have an IGA that we're writing up with the GRIC. They will install them um, and get their three signs and certainly improve safety in their area. So it's just a, a way that we could make sure that the GRIC got their signs as well. Okay, well, that sounds good. And, and my point was that was, I mean, I remember on the side corridor working on these safety projects uh, that we studied and we knew we could, if they were good projects that we could probably get the grant money to do them, and so I really am happy that that's taken place. Supervisor Surdy? So, yeah, I was going a different direction. I just wanted to point out how useful these are because in Apache Junction has some rural areas, and we had two streets that are traditionally you don't stop on them, and that's Tomahawk and Superstition. And in this one particular intersection, Tomahawk stopped, and there were fatalities there, and it was so remote, you couldn't put a red light out there, so what could they do? So they came up with these solar-powered, which is how they run all night, stop signs, and they definitely give you a warning way ahead of time. And so for remote areas where people are daydreaming and they don't expect to stop, it definitely will save lives and, and accidents. So I, I think this is a coming trend, and in a remote county like Pinal, I think you're going to see more and more of these. And so look for those. If you want to see an example of them, Superstition and Tomahawk has, has one. Two. Very effective, yeah. And, and the reason that I think ADOT wants those wanted uh, sovereignty to be signed over is just basically for maintenance. If It's I, typically I what so. it is. I, yeah, I believe that's what it is. And, I mean, we've dealt with that in the past. And so, but anyway, well, I'm glad that we're able to, to help our, our neighbor and uh, and. and make safer intersections because these rural intersections are uh, quite dangerous at times. So thank you. Is everybody okay? Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, thank you, Jason. All right, thank you. Okay. I'll Do I have stay. a um, motion for AH? I would move that we approve AH. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. AW, is that where I'm at? <laughs> Having a root beer. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Chair, I'm the one that asked to pull this, and so I guess I have a question in regards to the declaration itself, but then even the aftermath in the declaration, is there a way that we could, um, I mean, I'm thinking, uh, of some of the fires that have happened in other counties and where we didn't do the proper preventative measures after the fires. When the monsoons hit, we had some floods, and I'm thinking of Coconino County, county where there was some uh, li loss of lives that was lost as a result of that because we didn't do the proper uh, preventative things after the fact. And so I don't know if there's any way that we can add that into this. To, to, as a request, I don't know. Hope this isn't stump the attorney. <laughs> 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 Mr. Chairman, Supervisors, Kevin Costello, uh, Deputy County Attorney. Uh, Supervisor Goodman, to your, to your question, I, we would have to look at what was trying to be accomplished. Certainly, the purpose of this resolution is simply to declare an emergency that frees okay. up funds, that allows additional authorities to do additional things that would not only, you know, help the firefighting, but then the recovery efforts as well. I know uh, Mr. Komet may be able to address that a bit, but the emergency, also, you know, response 
includes recovery as well as just the initial response. Uh, so if there are spe specific actions that you would like to see included in the resolution, you know, we could look at that. However, I don't think that will be necessary to allow the authority to do those types of things. I think, you know, those are often included in emergency response. Certainly one of the main purposes of just the declaration of emergency is to free up state and federal monies. In that regard, it's important to get this as done as quickly as possible to, you know, open that spigot as you if you will, free up those uh, potential monies that can help respond. Uh, certainly we can come back with additional actions if there are specific things that the board feels need to be done. Um, but uh, hopefully that answers your question. That does. Thank you. I appreciate it. You Thank good you. With that? Yeah, I am. Thank you, okay. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. So, board's pleasure on AW. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve AW as presented. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to recess the Board of Supervisors meeting and open up the Public Health Service District Board of Directors meeting. Have that right here. So item number one is consent items. All items indicated by an asterisk will be handled in a single vote as part of the consent agenda unless a board member, county manager, or a member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. So uh, anybody on the board? Anybody in the county manager's office? Anybody in the public for the public health, director, uh, public health services district? Seeing none, board's pleasure. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve all consent items A through E. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. Adjourn the uh, public health direct <laughs> district meeting and reopen the Board of Supervisors meeting. So I believe we're at item number seven, which is uh, Mr. McCord. Discussion approval or disapproval of an intergovernment agreement with Maricopa County for the use of the treasurer's remittance and online collection service system. Good morning, Chairman, Board of Supervisors. Uh, yeah, we just call it T-Rocks. There we go. So T-Rocks. Make, make it easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so we were approached... Um, actually before the election, uh, by the Maricopa County Treasurer's Office, they wanted to use our software. Um, we kind of delayed that in the fact that um, there was going to be a new treasurer coming in, and I wanted to make sure that they were going to continue on with using it and then not get halfway through this IGA process, and then a new treasurer takes over, and he decides he didn't want it. So uh, subsequently, um, uh, John Allen is the new Maricopa treasurer, had looked at uh, the system. They needed to update theirs, and they liked what Pinal County has developed and has to offer. There is um, some ongoing stuff beyond this that they would like to continue to keep discussions going, but this gets them the software initially so that they can start onboarding it and making the uh, necessary changes and stuff that need to happen so that they can scale up for their their uh, operations, uh, Chairman Miller and I, as well as uh, uh, County Manager uh, Leo uh, Lou, uh, met with them so that we have an understanding of what they want. But at this point, this is just to provide them the opportunity to uh, get the system uh, up and running. The legacy happy, system. I'm happy they, to be helping our neighbors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the legacy system they have is is pretty outdated, so no. um, they uh, they need they need help. And it's, I'm glad that Pinal County is able to uh, step in and help them. Yeah. Right, right. Cool. Any other questions for uh, Treasurer McCord? I have one. I, sure. I see it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar one time payment. Is there any like ongoing or updates that go? So forward? their initial request was that they that they would purchase the software outright. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the initial step. This is what we've given to other counties as well that are using the system. 
um, because it's a IGA that renews. Um, but they, they have, there's additional conversations that they want to have about being able to actually just outright purchase uh, the software where they would own a piece of it. Um, but that's for another discussion down the road. Um, this just gets them the ability to be able to use it now. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And uh, I believe uh, we also assist with some um, some IT service if they need it, don't we? If, uh, we if, and that, then that in, in that hundred and fifty thousand, doesn't it include some? Uh, Chairman Miller, no, we actually took that out of the IGA. Oh, did you? Okay. Yes, yes. So, okay. so this is just just for the software. They for they the have software. they have a much bigger uh, IT staff just for okay. their treasurer's office than uh, than what we have. So, um, and the fact that they they have one of our. Uh, well, they have the for, one of the former developers of, of the Working T-Rock system now. that used to work here uh, now works there. So he's, okay. uh, you know, obviously it's been a couple of years, but I'm sure it won't take him long to be able to uh, figure out, you know, what sure. what changes we made and what needs to happen with the system. So uh, I'm happy to hear that we're on the cutting edge of. Well, <laughs> T-Rocks has been around for for quite a while, but I think Pinal County was very uh, had some foresight when they created it because um, a lot of the other counties are you know we have other counties that are using this and the other major player in in the arena uh, in this arena um, you know it's a it's a cookie cutter thing you buy what you get and it doesn't necessarily fit the statutes of of Arizona and it doesn't fit the way Pinal County does business we created a software that fits Arizona and works very well for Pinal County. So That's right. uh, kudos to the staff here for realizing this many years ago. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions or comments at this time? Board's pleasure. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve item number seven as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. McCord. So here we are on number eight, presentation and discussion, approval, disapproval of Pinal County tentative budget for fiscal year 21-22. Angie. Good morning, Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Angie Woods, uh, Director of Office Management and Budget. Uh, this morning... This item is before you to, um, the purpose is to adopt a tentative budget in accordance with state statute and the guidelines from our Auditor General's office. Um, we have prepared the, the schedule recording to those um, requirements and have been that has been attached to the agenda item. So this item is really to approve that. Um, Natasha, could you put the agenda item language up for me, please? Thank you so much. Um, it's come to my attention that the agenda item language needs to be amended. Uh, the agenda item language when it comes to approving um, positions created, we would like to amend the agenda item language to state Approval of this budget also approves the creation of any newly requested positions which have and are, in, are consistent with, so those uh, four words, and are consistent with existing job classifications that, have, that were included in the budget development process. I would like to amend that, that particular wording, please. Say that again. This, the sentence that starts with approval of this budget also approves the creation of any newly requested positions which have and are consistent with existing job classifications that were included in the budget development process. Everybody good with that? Understand? where the amendment needs to be in this motion. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. With that, I do have a, a presentation that I'd like to go through. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, 
Um, I first want to just really start with where we started in the budget development process. If you'll remember back to uh, the beginning of March, I believe it was the March 10th meeting, I came before you asking for guidance and priorities for this year's budget. Um, our priorities were to uh, stick with our county strategic priorities, which include maintaining uh, unrestricted general fund uh, financial stability reserve. We've switched that from a 15% reserve to a 20% reserve. Um, one of the other strategic priorities is to continue to focus on the reducing the primary property tax rate. Um, where one of the guidance and priorities is a structurally but balanced budget. So which means um, that one time, I mean, our revenues do not exceed our expenditures and that department requests do not exceed ongoing revenues. Um, part of the initiative was also to use one-time revenues to fund one-time expenditures. We also wanted to focus on employee compensation. Um, there, there was a um, change in our medical benefits trust. We're transitioning over to a single entity self-funded trust. Um, we are focused on uh, increasing budgetary for any workers' compensation and retirement changes, and then um, access contribution changes. And I wanted to note that earlier um, in Mr. Sullivan's presentation, he talked about the, the Altex contribution. And in the state's budget, which has not been approved yet, that Altex contribution is decreasing, and it's decreasing you know, the, the current proposal is about, for us, about $1.3 million. So um, that's something that I will continue to watch as the state develops their budget and we will adjust accordingly. Oops. So when um, we've put together all of, sorry, all of our um, total budget, this is how, if you were look, to look at Schedule A, um, falls into several different categories. Our general fund dollars, our special revenue funds, capital, debt service, and enterprise funds. Um, this, this particular year, 53% of our total budget is going to special revenue funds. Um, those are the major ones there are transportation, which includes um, HERF, our housing, um, the American Rescue Plan Act monies, our flood control district, our public health district, and then other grants that are in that, that category. As you're well aware, the general fund is all of um, our elected offices, our appointed departments, and the operating activities that go in there. Our capital projects funds um, this year there are some remaining funds yet to be spent on the four buildings that are currently in construction that we're rolling over to next year. And then um, in our last meeting, I gave you a list of CIP projects that we plan to move forward into this coming fiscal year. Our debt service fund for this year also increased slightly to include the debt service for that PSPRS um, and corp bond issuance that happened this current fiscal year. Um, wanted to give you some highlights as we uh, uh, put together the budget. Uh, direction was given to us to um, continue our commitment to financial strength. And in doing so, the direction was to give a six cent primary property tax rate reduction which we um, were at $3.75. This budget um, that is to be approved today um, has a primary property tax um, rate of $3.69. Um, and that is mostly due to our property valuation. So new construction valuation for this fiscal year uh, grew at $125 million which is about a 4.64% growth. The increase in existing property valuation um, grew about $55 million, which is 2%. So overall, really a, a little over 6.5%, so 6.67% 6 
which is fairly good for the county. Local excise tax in this budget um, and state shared revenue, I've, I've included at a slight increase due to uncharacter uncharacteristically high collections and abnormal circumstances during this fiscal year. And that's because we are recognizing that some of the revenues that we're currently receiving are probably one-time revenues due to more online shopping, more people shopping at home due to um, the pandemic. Um, we also included all of the reallocations and budgetary increases that we discussed in the prior meeting and I've given you um, quite a bit of detailed information on those things. The budget also includes strategic compensation increases. Our HR department will be bringing a compensation plan for approval. Uh, I believe there, that is planned for the final adoption. Um, in between this tentative budget and the final adopted budget, we will be looking at classifications with critical compensation issues, and so there may be some changes to uh, the compensation increases coming forward. Any question there? Um, last of all, decrease in overall medical benefit costs per employee, so both the county and the employee's medical benefit costs are going down for, due to that transition to the self-funded um, self trust. Questions on the highlights? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. I do have one little quick question if you sure. go back. Do you, on uh, the new construction valuation and the existing property valuation, do you know what that, what that number is? What is the assessed value? Do you know that? I don't have it off the top of my head, but I can give that. If you'll get it to me, I'll appreciate it. I can get it. that to you, sir. Thank you. I, I'd like I that, that as well, you? please. Thank sure, you. I can Just give send. it to all of us. I can send it to all. Sorry, just make a note there. All right, moving on to the next slide. Um, I wanted to provide you a chart that shows all of the total revenues that are included in this budget. So this ch pie chart excludes any um, transfers of funds and any fund balance. So you can see that that number is quite a bit smaller than our total budget, and that's because we do have funds that are held in reserve um, for, you know, our financial stability reserve is in there. We have funds that are for projects, um, transportation projects in the future, um, those types of things. Um, wanted to, to point out the state and federal grant funds, that's uh, at 20% for this year. Um, a majority of that is for the uh, American Rescue Plan Act um, money that is coming into us, and then housing and CBDG, so all of the things that are supportive for the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Property taxes, uh, that 25%, that's mainly our primary property tax. That also includes our fund control district and our public I'm sorry, our public library district. The state shared excise tax, it's based upon our census data. Um, at this time, since the census isn't completed, this is still an estimate of where we'll be at for this next year. The county excise tax piece of the pie includes not only our um, local county excise tax, but it also includes our transportation excise tax, and our public health excise tax. So that percentage to our taxpayers is about a 1.1% um, sales tax. Um, you'll notice there I have um, broken out how much money is coming in for vehicle license tax, for our HERF funds, um, charges for services. Most of the charges for services are for our development type revenues. Um, license and permits, and fines and forfeits. And then anything that's other governmental is really um, those in lieu of taxes. So we have a, a couple of entities that are, are paying a, a, an in lieu of tax. And then um, 
in addition to that, we get some federal PILT money that is included in that other intergovernmental piece of that pie. Any questions on our revenues for next year? So distribution of all of our funds. So this is the entire county budget. And there again, we are going to be holding some money in reserve for future um, projects and financial stability. You'll notice that our general government is about 28%. Again, there is all of our board district offices, our treasurer, our recorder, our assessor, uh, the county manager, and all the county manager appointed departments is in that 28%. 28% is public works and their road projects. So quite a bit of stuff going on for our transportation in the county. The criminal justice and law enforcement for the entire county, that includes the county attorney's office, the clerk of the court's office, the sheriff's office, superior court, juvenile court services, adult probation, conciliation court, constables, all of our JPs, public defense services, and correctional health. So, and this includes not only their general funds, but their non-general fund um, dollars as well. Um, in the other category, that would be our library district, our school superintendent, superintendent's office, and any of our special districts that we have here in the county. Welfare includes the behavioral health and housing aspect. And in that piece of the pie that I have marked for health is our public health, our animal care and control, air quality, our medical examiner's office, and our medical forensic office. So kind of a, a diverse split there. In our last discussion, we had um, some talk about the number of employees um, that will be funded in this current budget. I just wanted to, to provide some historical information for you all to show you how um, stable our uh, employee workforce has been. So in comparison to 2011, um, we are pretty much at the same number of employees at, at as 2011. Along the way, you know, from t 2010 to now, we've had some changes due to um, things like the loss of our long-term care contract and our Horizon Health Care contract. Um, we also reduced some of our um, full-time employees when we um, went away from our ICE contract. So even doing those types of things, our workforce and the number of people that we're employing is pretty stable. Any questions there? This next slide is, is our typical primary property tax dollar. And this will be updated in the meeting um, to adopt our tax levy and rates that will be held in August. Um, so this representation of the dollar is for the fiscal year 2021 and at that time 24 cents of the dollar comes to the county and then you can see there where our um, cities and towns the school district the college and other special districts how that that tax dollar breaks up I wanted to point out that this is due to our strategic um, priority of lowering the primary property tax rate it is down 31 cents. We reduced it 31 cents from 2010-11. So a fantastic job by our board members. And to, to further um, illustrate that point, I have on here in 2010-11, they were the the Pinal County Board at that time was taxing at the very maximum. So the, the bar on there is the max. And the line is the rate in which we are currently um, taxing. So as you can see, after 10-11, the strategic priorities um, reduce that tax rate in comparison to the max rate. Um, today, for our fiscal year 2021 budget, we have a max allowable tax levy of $168,856,576. So 
That is about 63 million more than what our current um, tax levy will be for this year. So 60, about 63% um, more. So our efforts for our strategic priority are clearly stated there. And this pie chart is very similar to one I've showed you in the last few meetings. Um, nothing much has changed. Primary property tax um, is still about 47%. Um, intergovernmental, which is, again, our state-shared and our VLT excise tax, still at 30%. Um, county sales tax, 11% of our total. Um, charges for service, 5%. License and permits, 2%. Uh, transfers, 2%. Miscellaneous, 3%. And very small, less than 1% for fines and forfeits. So this is a slightly different take on the distribution of our general fund. Um, I had some comments and suggestions on how to better represent the way we um, are spending our money. So this breaks up our criminal justice and our law enforcement into uh, three different areas. We've broken it up with the sheriff, which is 33%, our courts, which is 16%, and legal, which is 13%. Uh, so the sheriff's office piece is really everything um, related to the sheriff's office and um, also the adult detention and the correctional health services that go into that piece of um, how we spend money there. The courts under that is our superior court, our juvenile court services, our adult probation conciliation court, all of our JP courts and our constables, so 16% of that. And then that legal piece that is typically part of our criminal justice and law enforcement, that 13% is our county attorney's office and our public defense services office. So, Angie, does that include the civil attorneys? I mean, the entire... The entire county. legal... Okay. Yes. <coughs> Any questions with the way I've broken that pie, that criminal justice and law enforcement piece of that pie up? No, I like, I like it. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Okay. And then health there is the same thing as what it's always been. That's mainly our contribution to access. And there again, um, I have listed there about $17 million, and we know that that's going to, to probably decrease due to the state budget. Um, and so, like I said, I will continue to watch that piece. Our general government, again, is just, you know, those board offices, our facilities, our utilities, any of those appointed departments. Any other questions there? I did want to give you a, another look at our forecast, and I really only updated two lines on here, and I have them highlighted. And I just wanted to show you the, the change in the revenue for our um, property taxes due to um, the direction given to have our tax rate at $3.69. So that number, in comparison to what if we would have um, had a tax rate at $3.75, that is about $1.7 million less. So we're putting that back, giving that back to our taxpayers. The <coughs> other change here is in that non-personnel line. I had in between our last meeting and today, I had a couple of more, a uh, couple of requests come in from our departments. I've shared the detail with you there. Those. It was about a hundred thousand dollars difference there. I do expect, with discussions with Mary Ellen um, and HR about compensation, we may need to change that personnel number site slightly due to um, critical compensation needs. So that may change when we come to back to adopt the final budget. So here's my last slide. <laughs> um, 734,501,764 dollars. That is the um, ceiling for which 
I'm asking um, adoption of our tentative budget for this year. Um, once our tentative budget is adopted, there again, it's our ceiling. We won't be able to increase that number. Um, we've included all of our projected sources, how we're going to use those, including fund balance, um, and we include those even if we're not going to be spending it. So um, I did want to point out that our overall budget increased by about $164 million, primarily due to grant-funded um, activities for the American Rescue Plan Act and then other COVID-19 pandemic um, grant funds that we'll be receiving in this year. So I also could, should mention that we will um, be noticing the public for a truth in taxation hearing notice because uh, the tax rate that um, is included in this budget is above the truth in taxation rate, which is $3.6755, um, and the rate that you have chosen is three sixty nine. We will, we will have to notice the public that um, for a hearing, and that hearing will be held on the same day of our um, adopted budget. Any questions? Just. And just a clarification, I always like to point this out. We, we have to list everything that we might spend, even though we may not spend it, or, but if we think we might, we have to list it in here. So the projection is a lot higher than the actuals That's at the correct. end of the year. That's correct. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it doesn't only include the money that we might, it includes everything that we might receive and everything that we might spend, even if it's our financial stability reserve or planned dollars for projects that go into um, future fiscal years, um, we have to include that today. Right. Any questions? Mr. Supervisor Kavanaugh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director Woods, for clarification, we're reducing the tax rate, but if someone's house value goes up, from say 150 to 175, their tax bill isn't going to go down because of our rate. It, would you agree? I would agree with you. So it's important that the public know that even though we're reducing the rate, values are, of homes are going up, mm -hmm. and so uh, unfortunately, the the homeowners are not likely going to see a reduction. Well, and that that is particularly the reason why we have to have a truth and taxation notice. Um, and a hearing uh, at the time we adopt our final budget. Okay, thank you. Okay. Maggie, but according to legislation, on existing homes cannot increase by more than 5%. Is that correct? That's correct. So the max anybody could see on an existing home is, is a 5% increase. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. New houses are all set at current values. Yeah, and, and yeah. earlier in the presentation, that's that new construction Yeah, that was the piece. difference. Yes. Yeah. So, Yep. So I'll get you the breakdown of, of the new construction valuation and the existing valuation and what that means to our levy. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments? This is a, um, I believe this is a board action, right? We have to set a tentative budget. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> after all that. And after this, we cannot go up. We can only go down <laughs> from this number that she presented. So if there's no other questions or comments, do I have a motion by the board? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the Pinal County Tenity Budget for fiscal year 2021 through 2022 that will begin July 1st, 2021, ending June 30th, 2022 in the amount of $734,501,764 in accordance with ARS 42-17103. Um, approval of this budget also approves primary property tax rate from 3.75 to 3.69. Approval of this budget also approves the creation of any newly requested positions 
which have and are um, consistent with existing job classifications that were included in the budget development process. The public hearing and final budget adoption are scheduled for July 7, 2021. Very good. Supervisor Goodman, well done. Do I have a second to that motion? I would echo Supervisor Goodman's <laughs> motion with a second. Yes. Very good. So uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angie. Well Thank done. Thank you. And I believe we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Oh, yeah.